In any good design, form follows function. With particle science in mind, fabric research on hand, and design drivers in view, I am introducing this brand new mask design, which I am calling the Conestoga mask. This mask has more surface area, which in theory will slow down the airflow rate and increase filtration efficiency. It is constructed with three sections of boning for structure to keep it away from the nose, mouth, and face to retain as much fabric surface area as possible and make it easier to breathe in. This boning structure also allows it to expand and contract when breathing, talking, or yawning instead of slipping. Additionally, this mask can be fitted with either a rubber strip on the inside of the mask for a much tighter seal around the chin and cheeks or constructed to accept a removable filter. You can use any fabric for this filter, but if you are in the USA or Canada, I highly recommend Filthy Mask Fabric. Stay tuned to the end of this video where I will explain why I like Filthy so much, show you how to make Filthy into an easy removable filter, and give you a coupon code for use on Filthy.com. Here is my fair warning. This is not a super easy or super quick mask to sew, but it is worth the effort. This is a long video so that you are fully prepared to sew this mask as easily as possible. Please share your success stories in the comments below for encouragement to others and so that we can celebrate your success with you. With this great mask structure, you will better protect both yourself and others while maintaining your personal comfort as much as possible in a mask. Let's get started. Print the pattern from the link in the description below. You may need to click the little arrow or triangle under the video or click the words show more to reveal the entire description. Make sure you measure the gauge box. It should measure one inch. Cut out the pattern. Let's gather and prepare our supplies and materials. First, we are going to cut all our hem bindings out of knit fabric. I like to use 82% nylon and 18% spandex fabric in a color that coordinates with the background of my face fabric. This is found in the athleisure section of the fabric store. I buy a quarter yard, which is enough for many masks. The fabric comes in a 58 inch width and is already folded in half on the bolt. To cut it easily, just fold it in half again by placing the fold near the selvage edges. Make sure the cut edge is square to your folded edge. You may need to cut off some waste fabric to square it up. Cut off a one inch strip of fabric, a two inch strip of fabric, and a half inch strip of fabric. This will be enough for at least two masks. We will cut each of these strips down further to lengths we can use in the mask. Cut the half inch strip in half. Each half will become a 30 inch strap for a mask. Cut the two inch strip into eight inch lengths. Each mask will use an eight inch strip cut in half or two four inch strips. Cut the one inch strip into 12 inch lengths. Each mask will use a 12 inch strip cut in half or two six inch strips. I like to keep each of my strip sizes in a labeled bag for easy organization. I cut a lot of strips ahead of time and then just pull out what I need. To recap, you will need one half inch by 30 inch strip for the head strap, two two inch by four inch strips for the short sides of the mask, and two one inch by six inch strips for the nose and chin ends of the mask. You will also need to purchase quarter inch feather light boning from a fabric shop or online. Although the boning comes in a white cotton casing, we will not be using the casing. You will need approximately 20 inches for each mask. The boning on the outside of the roll has less curve than on the inside of the roll. If you would like to open up the tightly coiled nylon boning, just pour hot water just under the boiling point over the nylon boning and let it sit for just a moment. You will see it will quickly uncoil. 
Remove it carefully and then shape it as it cools. This mask comes with several finishing options. You can either wear it as it is, wear it with a rubber strip to help seal it against your face, or wear it with a filter Velcroed into the mask. If you decide to add a rubber layer around the mask, you will need rubber window seal from a hardware store. This is made from EPDM rubber. This is the small size that contains two eight and a half foot white strips. I have only hand washed these in warm water without bleach. You may not boil this. You will use about 12 inches for each mask. Peel the double strip in half, cut off a 12 inch length, and then peel off the adhesive. Cut that strip in half so you have two six inch strips. In order to sew the rubber onto the mask without getting caught on the presser foot, you will need a one half inch by 12 inch strip of parchment paper cut into two six inch strips. If you decide to construct the mask to accept a filthy filter, then you will need 14 inches of 5 8 inch wide Velcro in a color that coordinates best with your knit hem binding fabric. Cut the 14 inches into a 3 inch piece, a 5 inch piece, and a 6 inch piece. Cut each of these pieces of Velcro in half lengthwise. You want very thin strips of Velcro. You really only need the hook side of the Velcro for this project, but I highly recommend that you cut both the hook and loop sides together to later protect your fabric from snags. If you use a filthy filter inside this mask, then you can use any fabric for the outside of this mask that you would like. Filthy will be doing the filtration work, not the fashion fabric. Feel free to use organza, chiffon, cotton, silk, or anything that you like the look of. As a note, if you use knits, such as a t-shirt fabric, then your mask may come out a little larger if the knit stretches a bit when you are sewing it or pushing in the boning. If you are going to just wear this mask without a filter, then you will want to choose a fabric that has some acceptable level of filtration. I still like the stretch chiffon instead of cotton. If you are going to construct this to accept a removable filthy filter, then you will want to pre-wash your face fabric. If you want more information on fabric filtration, please see maskfac.com, which has results for many tested fabrics. I have linked this website below. We want to fold the fabric perpendicular to the selvage. So take the top cut edge and fold it down towards the bottom cut edge. This layout method will place your directional fabric correctly on your finished mask. Lay your pattern pieces on the fabric and pin close to the edge. Cut out the fabric. Lay out your pieces as you would like them to appear on the mask. With my leaf fabric, I have a lot of options for arranging the pattern to suit me. If you have a strong directional fabric, you will have a clear, correct option. To start the French seam, pick up and pin the center pieces with wrong sides together. I use just a few pins as close into the seam allowance as I can. Reposition the mask and then pick up and pin the center to an end with wrong sides together. Pin on the other end to the center with wrong sides together. Sew these three seams with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Keep this seam allowance as narrow as possible. If the seam allowance gets too wide, you may trim it close to your stitching.
snip the cut threads and also any frayed fabric threads that may want to stick through to the front of your mask after we sew the next seam. To finish the French seam, turn each piece with right sides together along the seam lines and pin into place. So each of these three seams at a quarter inch seam allowance. This French seam will become the casing for the boning. You will want to back tack on at least one end of each of these three seams so that your seam doesn't open up later when we insert the boning. Make sure this seam allowance is at least one quarter inch the entire length of the seam so that it will accept the quarter inch boning. Looking at the right side of your fabric, lay the pattern on top and just slightly below the cut edge. Insert a pin above each pattern mark. Take the center pin and pierce the fabric at the point of the left pin. Fold the fabric together on the pin and then push that fabric fold to the left. Pin that fold down with the cut edges even. Do the same with the right side, but push that fold to the right. Check your work to make sure the box pleat is centered and even by folding the end piece in half. All the cut edges and folds should line up. The left pleat should fall like a Z and the right pleat should fall like an S. Repeat the process on the other end. Base down the box pleats with a quarter inch seam allowance. Use a rather long stitch because you will probably want to remove this stitching later. Arrange your mask so that the box pleats are on the top and bottom of the mask. The one inch binding will be sewn along the four points at the top of the mask and the other binding at the bottom along those four points. Take one one inch strip that is six inches long and stretch it a little bit. The knit fabric will roll to the wrong side. Pin the right side of this strip to the right side of the mask fabric at the far left point. I pin all along the top edge to keep it in place. It is okay to stretch the knit a little, but don't stretch it too far and cause the mask to pucker. It is also okay to round off the points in the middle near the box pleat. We ultimately want a curved seam here and not a hard corner. After you sew, you can trim off the points that are too large to tuck into the next seam. You will have more knit strip than fabric. We will cut off this excess later. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance.
trim the points if necessary. Fold back the knit strip along the seam line and remove the basting stitches if you can see them. Once those stitches are out, fold the long cut edge of the knit strip down to the seam and then fold it over again along the seam line. Magic clip this strip into place. I start in the middle near the box pleat and then clip the ends and finish off in between. Sew this binding in place with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure that you do not sew across your French seams and accidentally sew them closed. Remember, we need to insert boning into those seams and so they will need to remain open. Remove the clips. Trim off the excess thread and binding flush on each side. Look at your work and determine which side you did not back tack on for the French seams. The French seam side without back tacking is where we will start with our first side binding. Flatten and pin these unback tacked French seams down so that the seam is in the center back. Baste the seams flat with a quarter inch seam allowance. Find the wrong side of your binding by stretching it slightly. The knit will roll to the wrong side. Pin the right side of the hem binding to the wrong side of the mask down the side. Pin over the top and bottom bindings and over the French seams. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance, back tacking at the beginning and end of this seam. Turn the mask over and pull out the binding. Roll the binding down a quarter inch and then fold it in half with the rolled fold over the stitching on the right side of the mask. Ideally, you want this binding to be even. Pin it into place so close to the left edge on the front of the mask, making sure to back tack at the beginning and end of the seam. Trim off the excess thread and binding in line with the top and bottom of the mask. Do not accidentally clip the face fabric. Prepare your boning by snipping the corners off of the boning and sanding any sharp edges down with a nail file or sandpaper. While looking at the wrong side of your mask, insert the boning as if it were smiling at you. Gently push the boning through the casing until it touches the other side seam. Gently stretch out your mask fabric along the boning. If you are using knit fabric for the face fabric, be sure not to stretch the fabric stitches open. This will make your fabric less effective and your mask quite large. Mark where the mask fabric comes to on your boning with your fingers. Push the fabric back along the boning and cut the boning about a half inch short of the edge of the fabric. 
snip and sand the corners of the boning. Push the boning all the way into the French seam casing. You may want to pin the seam so that the boning does not slide out while you're working on the other pieces of boning. Repeat the process with the other two French seams. When you try to insert the boning, you may find that you accidentally sewed the end of the French seam too narrow to accept the boning. This can be easily fixed. Just put your needle into the good seam line and sew the narrow portion again at the right distance. Remove the narrow seam portion with the seam ripper. You should have no trouble inserting the boning. Baste the boning into the French seams by sewing one quarter inch from the edge of the fabric with the seam on the center back. Do not sew through the boning. Sew the other hem binding with the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the fabric, just as we did before. You may either use pins or magic clips for this seam. Do not sew through the boning. This seam can be a little tricky because you are now sewing around the boning. Just go slowly and don't be discouraged. Sometimes this seam is a real problem and other times it goes surprisingly smoothly. Again, back tack on both ends of this seam. Turn your mask over, roll back the binding one quarter inch and fold over the stitching. Pin it in place. Ideally, you want this binding to be even. Sew and back tack it in place. And trim it even with the top and bottom edges as we did before. If you want to wear your mask as it is, then just add straps and a wire. But if you want to add a rubber seal to the top and bottom of the mask, or if you want your mask to accept a filthy filter, then we need to do those things now. I highly recommend at least one mask with a filthy filter in case you find yourself in a high risk situation. To add the rubber, magic clip the six inch rubber strip in place along the top and bottom of the mask. We want the rubber strip to be running right along the top and bottom binding hems. Ideally, the bump in the rubber will be just above the seam line that you sewed for the binding. You want to flatten the bump in the rubber with the clips. Make sure the rubber is centered, but you can cut off any excess before you sew. You need to leave space to insert your straps into the wider side bindings, so don't sew these closed. In order to allow the rubber to slide under the presser foot, you need to line it with a piece of parchment paper. Just clip the pieces you have prepared under the magic clips completely covering the rubber. Sew the rubber in place through the parchment paper down the natural line just under the bump in the rubber. Be sure to back tack on both ends. Remove the parchment by ripping it at the seam line, which is now a perforated line. Pull off the other side as well and any paper pieces left behind. If you choose to go with a removable filthy filter, then we will add Velcro to the mask at this point, which will hold the filter in place. To add the Velcro, pin only the hook side of the Velcro to the wrong side of the mask with the center of the thin Velcro strip along the hem binding seam lines. Center the five inch pieces to the top and bottom. And the three inch pieces on the sides. You can trim the Velcro to fit. 
Once you have pinned it along the seam line, turn the mask over to repin along the same seam lines. Remove the pins on the back. Sew the Velcro to the mask by top stitching along the same stitching lines that you see. You will want to back tack. To fully secure the filter away from your face, fabric glue in one six inch strip of hook side Velcro onto the center French seam and boning. I use liquid stitch permanent fabric adhesive. First fit the strip in place and then put the fabric glue on the back of the hook side only. Put it into place and press firmly. Follow your glue directions. I let mine dry 30 minutes as directed. Print the Conestoga mask filter pattern linked below. Make sure the gauge block measures one inch. Cut out the pattern. You can make a filter out of any fabric that you have available, but Filthy Fabric filter material is my first choice because it is consistently highly rated, has been developed for this very use, and is the best material that is currently available. It is made in the USA and they also ship to Canada. It is designed specifically by a filter company for safe use in masks. You could cut and sew masks directly out of filthy fabric, but it is not meant to be washed and reused. So in my opinion, it is perfect as a quick insert filter in a reusable mask such as the Conestoga. Filthy has earned consistently high marks for filtration rates in the 0.3 micron range. Back in the spring, I had seen Filthy appear on the market with some filtration rates posted on a couple of websites. I kept coming back to MassFact.com and reached out to both Chloe Schempf and TSI to confirm the test results posted there. TSI is not normally a testing company, but they are the company that manufactures the testing equipment for NIOSH certification. They know a lot about particle science and material testing. For the good of humanity, in the midst of a crisis, they agreed to test many fabrics for Chloe Schempf for MassFacts.com. Those credible test results are posted there. I highly recommend going to MassFact.com to look at the TSI tested fabric data that Chloe has posted. As you can see, Filthy is very highly ranked. You can use one layer of Filthy as I demonstrate here, or you can sew two layers together for even higher filtration efficiency. After TSI confirmed the results, I ordered 21 square feet of yardage from Filthy.com. It came quickly and was well packaged. I am very excited to announce that Filthy has graciously offered a one-time coupon code to you. Just use GALE10 as the coupon code and save 10% on your next order. The white side of the fabric is to go towards your face and the green side of the fabric goes away from your face. I remember this as white is tight and green goes away. Fold your fabric with white or right sides together and cut out your pattern. Leaving your pieces together, sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance along the bottom cut edge only. Back tack at both ends of this seam. To insert this filter into your mask, open up the filter along the seam and refold it in the opposite direction with the white sides together. I keep the loop side of the Velcro on my hook sides to protect my mask fabric before they go into use and during washing. If you do this, peel off the loop Velcro. Place the center of the filter seam on the center boning Velcro, and then carefully place the rest of the seam on the Velcro, smoothing in one direction and then the other. Then place the center of the top of the filter on the center of the top Velcro piece and finger pleat the sides into place all along the top Velcro. Do the same on the bottom. Trim off any filter material that is peeking out. 
When you are finished with your filter, you need to pull it out, throw it away, and insert a new one. I cut and sew a large batch of filters at once so that I can quickly insert a new one as needed. Snip a little hole into the top knit binding near the far right edge. Be sure you only snip the knit and not the face fabric. Slip in a wire. I am currently using a four inch piece of pre-wrapped 18 gauge floral wire I purchased from Walmart. The package came with about 20 straight pieces of wire, each about 18 inches long. I just cut a four inch strip, slip it into my mask, and mold the wire to my nose and cheeks. Thread the half inch knit strap piece into a yarn needle. Thread the strap through the side binding from the bottom of the mask to the top and then back down through the other binding to the bottom of the mask again. I tie my straps in a slip knot for the final owner to adjust. To fit your mask, adjust the wire and mask on your face and then tie the straps fairly tightly around the back of your head. They will stretch so you can take them off over your head without untying them. You could also use a cord lock for easy readjusting each time if you prefer. In order to get the best fit for you, you may want to invert your straps so they cross at your ears and pull your mask sides in more tightly. Be careful that your mask is adjusted well, however, and that crossing your straps doesn't leave a gap. Every time you put your mask on, you also want to definitely readjust your straps to make sure that you have a nice tight seal around the sides of your face, over your nose, and around your cheeks and chin. If you need a little bit more mask adjustment, you can shape the boning to get more height off your face. Just bend the boning in the center and then at each quarter mark. This is a bit like molding the brim of a baseball cap. Just work on it a bit until you are satisfied. Shaping the boning not only keeps the mask off your face and gives you more air space, but makes the mask more narrow. If the mask is too tall from nose to chin, you can cuff a section of the mask by turning or flipping a piece of the boning down twice along with the fabric. In my opinion, the ultimate combination is to sew the Velcro around the perimeter to accept the filthy filter, and then to sew a piece of window seal right along the top of the mask so that the flat portion of the window seal slips under the Velcro. Slip a wire down the tube portion of the window seal. It's comfortable because the rubber cushions the wire on your nose. The rubber will also conform to your facial features, which will assist you in getting a nice tight seal and keep your glasses from fogging up, as well as helping to ensure that all the inhaled and exhaled air moves through the filter. This is my favorite combination. Feel free to alter the pattern as needed for the perfect fit as well. You can cut either pattern piece in half in one or both directions and either overlap or space the pieces and tape them together again. Make sure your overlap or gap is consistent and your sides are even. Remember that we cut two fabric pieces from each paper pattern piece, so your adjustment dimensions will double when sewn. If you are altering the pattern by slicing it from left to right, feel free to alter only one of the center or end pieces and cut the other as the original. If you are slicing from top to bottom, then you must alter all four fabric pieces the same way in order to keep the width consistent. As masks go, it is my favorite. It is easier to breathe in than anything I have tried thus far. It sits nicely off my face. I can take a deep breath and it doesn't move. I can yawn and it doesn't slip. I can seal it so it doesn't fog my glasses. I love the filthy filter which we used without question as we toured college campuses this late summer in states that were showing more cases. 
I felt more at ease knowing that as much as it depends on us, we had done our best to keep ourselves and others safe. For the rest, we relied on God. I hope you feel successful sewing this mask, safer wearing this mask, and remain comfortable as you go about your day in the mask. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.